While working on dice that I've been making, some of those were actually really good rolls. While working on the dice that I've been making for Loot Tables, which is the new shop that I've established to sell some of this D&D and tabletop and gaming merchandise that I've been creating, I've also been a big fan of laser engraving, which allows me to just instantly create designs on different materials that can be burned with a 50 milliwatt laser attached to a very cheap, universally cheap CNC. If you've watched some of the CNC related videos that I've done here on the channel, you know how much this thing just is not designed for carving materials, but it's really good at moving precisely on two axes and doing something that doesn't actually have to come in contact with what it's working on to come up with something that's actually pretty impressive. I do know though, that learning how this thing works and the softwares that power it is quite difficult and there's a hell of a learning curve. So let's try something a little bit different. Instead of just showing you how that machine works, because at the end of the day, if you do your job right, you push play and you keep an eye on the thing because it's still a laser burning material in your house, but it generally does the job on its own. The big difficulty, the big learning curve for this is not actually creating something. It's everything that happens before that from design phase all the way up to importing your project into a software called Lightburn or an equivalent software to program your robot to do cool laser things exactly how you want it to. So let's do a tutorial on how to use Lightburn, which is the laser engraver slash CNC programmer that I currently know how to use and I have been using to make these two-sided coasters, inspiration and bless and bane tokens and a few other fun things as little one-off projects. From here, we cut to a screen and you get to hear my voice in a little bit better of a microphone. Okay, so this is now over at the main channel. Well, main logo. I should probably update my background to account for Michael Makes because this channel has been doing so, so well. So we will, we will do that. But in the meantime, let's take a quick look at a nice little software I use called Lightburn, which is how we do all of the burns for all of the different tokens and how I'm going to teach you how to do laser engraving on a CNC machine. So Lightburn is the program where you actually program in the paths for your laser to run, but it's not a place where you can do design. You can do some really basic stuff, squares, you can make circles, you can add text. But to do really intricate design, any sort of real design work, you're gonna want an image editor like Photoshop. What you see here is the one half of the bless slash bane tokens that I sell over on loot tables. And again, a bit of a theme, you'll see a lot of stuff that I make for this channel available through that store. Don't know why I made them different names because this channel will do more than just the D&D stuff in due time. So it is a relatively, doesn't need to be super detailed because we're gonna do a lot of smoothing through Lightburn, but the more detailed you can make it, the better. The important thing here is to do it entirely in black and white because it'll make your tracing a lot easier. If you wanna do multiple different tool paths and do layers via different colors, that's available too, but this is a very basic intro to Lightburn tutorial, so we're keeping it relatively simple. So you take your image and you export it out as a PNG file, just so you have nice clean edges and you don't have to worry about JPEG artifacts at all. So I have here, I have the blessed token, I have the Bane token as well. Some of the different versions of the coasters and the inspiration tokens who you have also probably seen over on loot tables. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and clear out all of these things that we don't actually want. And we will pull up that token and just drag it in to Lightburn, which will get it all as one thing. Now you don't want this to be how you carve. This isn't actually a way for you to carve. If you were to preview it, and you can just do Alt-P, this is awful. This is an awful way to try to design something. All of these red lines that you see and doing the whole thing just left to right, bottom to top, is extremely inefficient. And like this says, this takes about 10 minutes 
that's the estimated time. Most machines, depending on the speed of your machine, it'll take a little bit longer than that. But just remember this number right here, 919. If we just took the whole image and did nothing different with it, and it says 919. That's not, this that won't work. Just see how slow this is. So what we can do is we can trace this image. So we can go over to tools, trace image, and you'll see that it's going to build the purple outline around all of the black areas and it does some automatic smoothing as well to clean things up, make things nice and simple. It stays relatively on brand. The important part here is that all of our edges are nice and clean and that we don't have any lines overlapping that we don't want to. You'll see here, it rounds off a little bit, but I've actually kind of built the design with that in mind, so it works out. So what we'll do, you can adjust here how smooth you want it to be, how if you ignore anything less than two pixels wide and to optimize your toolpaths in some way. These are the settings I like to use of two, one, 128 and 0 0.2. So we can just hit okay. And now we can delete our image and we have our toolpath, which awesome. So if we do line and we all preview it to just draw the lines around everything we just did is 27 seconds. So going from nine minutes and 20 seconds down to just over 20 seconds, but that's just for the lines. We're gonna wanna color some aspects of this in. So these wings right here, the letters, we'd wanna color those in, the halo, the different borders around here, the D4 pattern, we wanna color all of this in. So if we convert this and just say fill instead, and we Alt-P it, we're back down to that ridiculous toolpath. It's only 916 now, but it's all one shape. And that's, that's not gonna work. So what we wanna do is click, click this button up here and ungroup our selection. So now each of these lines operate independently of each other. And we could go here and take fill and we'll say fill it and we will scan shapes individually and we Alt-P it, and now it's a little bit better. It's 20 minutes, which is even worse. So what we're gonna wanna do is take all of these and move them into different layers and treat them all differently. And it's relatively easy to do. You highlight the layers you wanna change. So let's take all of our triangles, the triangle border, and you click a color, and that moves them all to a new layer. So we can say this is filled, and we'll push this back to line for right now. And in this fill, we'll say that, Alt P. And now we're still at about nine minutes. But what we can do, leave this line and we see it don't fill. But what we can do is take all of these things, group them back together. So when we select the layer, we select everything in the layer. And then your best friend when it comes to laser paths is this offset shapes option. So what you can do is click this and you pick a distance of some kind. So I will go 0 0.05 offset. If we zoom in really far here, you will see that a second set of lines is created. So I know from my laser and working with it, if I go 0 0.08, it is just wide enough as the aperture of my laser, meaning I can go about to 0.07, make sure I have a lot of overlay, round inward and I hit okay and I select the new barriers. Now if I do that one, two more times, I'm gonna get effectively the same filled shape, but at a fraction of the cost on time. Now it only takes about 51 seconds. And if we put this back up, have this, we're down to a minute and five with just bordering all of these things. And that's what I do a lot. So I take this red one, convert it, and, and I just start insetting multiple times to be able to get my paths. So it's offsets and just move in a little bit here and you'll see the lines start to eventually just get so close together that you're not gonna have a lot on your shapes. So about here, where you start to see that the inset borders are not really 
the same quality as the shapes that you're working with. And here's where I like to just do a bit of a fix layer. So take this innermost layer, those four lines that you see, the four areas right around the corners, and we'll convert those to a new layer. And we will take this and we will make this one fill. And we'll go into our properties and we'll say, scan the shapes individually. Alt P. So now we have this filling and the border filling and everything else here filling. And we're still at about 10% of the time that we had before. So we can take this stuff again. We'll group them. So we only have to worry about one of these. We'll make these our next layer and we'll just start and we can go a little bit bigger on this and we can just start filling these in. Now, just to show you a little bit, if we took this and did fill, Alt P, a lot of waste of time, we're 236, right? If we just inset this a ton of times, and just keep going with it. So there we go. Actually, we can go one, one further, because it doesn't matter if we get some this and what we'll do here, we'll go about half the same distance just to fill those gaps. So we have everything nice and close. Alt P, 236. Oh, that's because it's still set on fill. If we set that on line, we go from 236 to 204. We save about 30 seconds and we have everything still filled the exact same way. And now we can repeat this and you can watch me click the same buttons or I can just pop over to the pre-prepared version of what I had. Somehow I did not, somehow I've lost my blessed version. Hold on. This will all obviously be cut. Okay, so here is the finalized version of what we had. It's flipped upside down because the file, the actual tokens that I was carving against were upside down on the machine. But you can see if you have all your tool paths going exactly the right way, you have everything behaving the way you expect as far as your paths. So right here, the distance between this and this, if we carve here, we put it to 0.8. You can see it's the same 0.8 distance between all of that. We have our little fixes inside here and there and there and there. And then we have a little fix right there. And then the same little fix shape right in there. So this puts us with all of the same shapes, everything being filled to the same degree. We're at 50 seconds and all of this is this file has gone through multiple different revisions and tweaks to optimize the tool path and to have everything set up just so. So in under one minute compared to 10. Now my machine operates at a much slower speed than the default movement rate of what an, a laser engraver is expected to move at. So each of these takes me about four minutes to carve, which means I make one token in just under 10 minutes, which even in a laser engraver at full speed, if you did no optimizing would take just one side. So I hope this is very useful as far as learning how light burn works. If you liked this tutorial, I can do more, but now I'm gonna kick it over back to the video of myself to wrap this up. And that's pretty much it. You come out with a laser engraved inspiration token or a blesser bane token or a set of coasters or your cutting paper or stickers or potentially burning wood for cutting boards to do all sorts of very interesting and unique and personalized gifts for yourself or materials that you can sell as a small business. I hope this video was useful. I hope it leads you to potentially creating something new. I will have links to some of the things like the CNC that I use that I don't recommend for engraving, but I do recommend as a very cheap laser engraver, as well as an official laser engraver. I will have Amazon affiliate links down in the description as well. But until next time, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this or any of the other projects I've had here on the channel. I'd love to hear ideas or suggestions for things you want to see me tackle in creating. Until then, go out there, be good to each other, and I'll see you around.